Hey there guys, um, back again, obviously enough. Um, so yesterday I did a short little video. Let me adjust this for a second. Yesterday I did a short little uh, 15 minute video and um, I decided I like the concise feeling of just taking a little chunk and uh, going with that rather than a long string of information. It's much easier to memorize ideas when you're given them in little chunks. That is actually a principle in uh, neurolinguistic programming. And before you freak out, I mean, you know, saying that neurolinguistic programming is the, uh, the tool of the devil. Uh, I did extensive study into neurolinguistic programming when I was younger, back in the 90s. And I found it to be, first of all, the, the discovery of it was pure genius. That um, If you ever uh, looked into it, you see that Richard Bandler good or bad a person as he may be, did make an incredible discovery with this. It, it's just so ingenious, the whole system. And to me, I've always said when I discovered NLP, I realized that this is way, way more advanced than most of the psychological sciences we have today that are, accept that are accepted by the academics. Now, as with any tool, you can use it for good purposes or bad purposes. And unfortunately, one of the easiest um, things you could do with NLP right off the bat is influence people to the point where you're subtly hypnotizing them and getting them to do something you want, which of course is wrong. Um, and they'll use that of course in advertising and in politics and everything else. They're taking that tool and misusing it. Now I went to a therapist, uh, um, a psychotherapist back when I was in the days when I was living in Austin and he was an NLP guy and I have to say he healed me. He, he was one of the few therapists I had worked with in my life that actually changed me. Uh, so I have great regard for it as a tool for healing and as a tool for self-improvement. So don't, you know, just because there's this negative uh, connotation or anchor connected with the word, uh, the term NLP or neuro linguistic programming does not mean that it's a bad thing. It's just being misused and it could actually be of great aid to human beings in general. That's my little sidebar on that. All right, so anyway, uh, today I'm just gonna talk more about, a little bit more about the four triads, uh, and then we're gonna go into the subjects of the three chord qualities, uh, harmonic environments, and uh, harmonic environments as a historical phenomenon. And uh, well, if we get to it, I'm gonna do the chord scales of all three different um, uh, minor modalities, which would be the natural minor coming out of the natural scale, the harmonic minor with the uh, tweaked one tweak note and the uh, melodic minor with two tweak notes. So let's get started. First of all, uh, you know, I talked about how the fourth of the four possible triads emerged with the development of harmonic minor, and that would be the augmented triad. Now, uh, it's kind of interesting because you have a yin yang balance. Major and minor chords are stable, they sit still, they don't have to move if, they don't, if you don't want them to. The uh, diminished triad and the augmented triad, because of the nature of their broken fifth, they no longer have a perfect fifth in that triad, uh, are unstable and need to move. So on the one hand, we have the stable major and minor chords, and on the other, we have the unstable diminished and augmented chords. Okay. At the very top of music theory, by the way, there are two scales that relate to these two unstable chords. One is the um, whole tone scale, which is related to the augmented chord, and the uh, diminished scale, which is related to the diminished seventh chord. Um, anyway, now what I'm about to tell you is gonna seem pretty obvious, but it's important. When we discuss harmony, uh, as you can see, and you're getting a taste of, it could get more and more and more and more complex and, and sophisticated. So what I want you to think about is, um, is that there are only three chords. This simplifies thing, things a whole bunch. There are major chords, there are minor chords, and there are seventh chords. Now, the way music is, nothing is 100% true. It's always like 95% true that something comes along to change things. But uh, I will say this, like there are chords that fall outside of the category, category of major, minor, or seventh. Uh, one of them, let's look at the diminished chord. That actually is in the category of a seventh chord because when we build a G7, we get G, B, D, F. Well, B, D, F, standalone, is a diminished chord. So that's obviously related to seventh chords. 
The uh, other chord uh, that m seems like it might not be related is the minor 7 flat 5 or the minor 6. Um, these chords are actually what I call dominant minor chords, and I'll get to that in the future. But th uh, they don't function completely and totally as a minor chord, a pure minor chord would. So that stands out, out of the category of major, minor, or seventh. However, they are minor based. Um, uh, finally, we have the, um, the augmented chord, and that to me is the most mysterious and unsolvable because it doesn't have a tritone interval in it to make it, uh, to make it dominant, to make it a dominant seventh chord. So the problem there is it's hard to, to, to put it in one of those three categories. Yes, it's major bass because the root to the third is indeed major, uh, so, but it's, it's too unstable to be uh, freely called a major chord. I hope this noise in the background isn't going to bother you there. Um, power washing the walls on my building. Okay, so there we have the three chord qualities, major, minor, and seventh, with a small percentage of chords that may stand outside those. But the point of my saying that is this. If I have a C major, or a C major 7, or a C major 9, or a C major 9 add 13, or a C major 6, 9, whatever the major chord may be, it, it functions as just a C major. It doesn't matter all the baubles. Let me explain. I could uh, do uh, London Bridge is falling down with a C major chord, da, 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 with a C major seven chord, da, 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 with a C major nine chord, da, 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 with a six a C six nine chord, da, 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 da. and finally a C major uh, uh, C major nine and thirteen chord, which is to me the proper way of stating that chord's name. Uh, other people would call it C major 13. Da, 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 da. So you see, all what we're doing here is we're adding... A basic triad is kind of like a naked Barbie doll, okay? Uh, or a Ken doll, uh, depending on your preference. And uh, when you dress that doll up, it doesn't matter how much, you know, the hats and the accessories and all this stuff and gloves and blah, 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 you put on it, underneath it is still the same doll. And the same is true for chords when you build upon them, uh, when you add more and more elements to, the, uh, to that chord. Uh, basically, the chord remains the same underneath. You're just prettifying it. I like to say, uh, uh, you know, when you have something like a C major 9 chord, it's a C major chord in a tuxedo. Okay. Uh, so all this math. See, a lot of people get so confuzzled about the math around chords, like uh, uh, G13 flat 9. What is that? All you know, right. But really, when you understand that there are three chord types and three chord qualities, you understand that as just simply a G7 that's got a tuxedo on, it's dressed up. Wow. Okay, so anyway, that. Now, to extend the concept, there are also three harmonic environments. And what that means is when I have a root chord that's minor, that means no matter what other chords come after that root chord, uh, it will... Um, uh, maintain its minor quality as an, a complete environment. And to really highlight that, I could take uh, So what I'm doing is A minor, F, C, G. All right? And notice that there's only one minor chord, but it's serving as the root, and the rest are major chords. Now, in a democratic society, you'd call that a major progression, but it's no such thing. It's a minor progression, even though it, the bulk of the chords are major. It doesn't matter, okay? Maybe this is why voting, the whole system of voting doesn't work, because um, the majority doesn't rule in this case. Um, all right, so there are minor environments. There are major environments, obviously enough, that if I was in the key of C and I had a progression that's strictly resolved to the C major chord, <laughs> That's a major environment. And again, the same principle is true. If I threw in a bunch of minor chords after that, it doesn't matter. If it's coming home to the major chord, it's a major environment. And with the advent uh, in the 20th uh, uh, century, early 20th century, uh, late 19th century, blues started coming into the fore. And for the very first time in history, you can now have a dominant seventh harmonic environment. 
people don't understand the profound changes that the blues brought a, brought, uh, brought forth. Maybe one day they will get it. But uh, in this case, if I use a simple blues progression, um, G7, C7. And now we can end on that seventh chord as the root of that particular environment. And it, again, it doesn't matter the chords that come after. This is a dominant seventh environment, what I like to call a blues environment. So now you have three chord types, major, minor, and seventh, and uh, uh, you have three types of chord environments. Now don't confuse the three chord types with the four triads. The four triads are three note chords, not four note chords, so uh, you wouldn't include a seventh chord in that, uh, those, that particular category of chords. There's only uh, three notes in each of these chords, the major, the minor, the... Um, uh, diminished in the augmented chords. Okay. Uh, now, so we spoke about harmonic environments. I'd like to just quickly mention, it was a little epiphany of mine, I probably mentioned it before in one of my videos, but harmonic environments as a historical phenomenon. Um, if we go back to the ancient Greek modes which predate uh, the major minor key system we know today, uh, we can say that the dominant seventh chord within a key resolves to that one major chord. So that's the strongest resolution you could find in the key of C, and you are indeed resolving to a major chord. So you could say, in a sense, that the Greek modes are a major-based environment. Uh, when we get to the um, major minor key system, all the tweakery and weirdness did not happen on any major scales. It happened on the minor scales. So you could say that, uh, historically speaking, when the major minor key system was brought about, now we have a minor bass system. We're leaning on the minors to create change and difference. And then once again, the brilliant historical phenomenon in the uh, late 19th, early 20th century, the emergence of the blessed blues. And now um, uh, the focus is on the dominant seventh chord. So you, could, you know, these three chord qualities, it seems like historically we had to intellectually evolve to a point where we could accept finally this third chord type. What happens after this, God only knows. I mean, uh, you know, it's hard to say what the future of music is going to be. Um, okay, now um, let's talk about the chord templates of the natural minor or the Aeolian scale the harmonic minor and the melodic minors. Now, um, the natural minor, uh, if we take the key of C as our example and go to A minor, we're calling that the A natural minor scale, it's gonna have the same exact template as the key of C, just starting on a different chord on the treadmill, right? So, uh, where you normally had uh, C, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor, B diminished, now you have A minor, B diminished, C, D minor, E minor, F, G, or G7. All right, so um, that. And the sound of that is A minor, B diminished, C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G or G7, and to e mi A minor again. And you can hear it, it does sound very natural. All right, now when we go to that tweak note, the G sharp, uh, in the uh, harmonic minor, we um, no longer have a G7 in that, but we wind up with an E7. So I'm going to do, uh, the chords there would be A minor, B diminished, C augmented, D minor, E7, F major, and G sharp diminished. Now we have two unstable triads within that string, okay, which would immediately suggests that the entirety of that scale is somewhat uh, unstable and that much is true. The sound of the chord scale of that one is A minor, B diminished, C augmented, hear that? Uh, D minor, uh, uh, yeah, D minor, E, E or E7, G sharp diminished, and A minor, which sounds again Okay, um, and 
finally, the melodic minor, we not only tweaked the G in the C scale to a G sharp, but we tweaked the uh, F to an F sharp as well. You could imagine what happens. Now, uh, the two chord of the key of A minor is no longer diminished, but it's B minor. Then we have a C augmented as before. Then a D or a D7, an E or an E7. Then G sharp, uh, F sharp diminished, G sharp diminished, and A minor. So that sounds like... I'm going to play all three in a row so you can hear them all natural. Harmonic. And melodic. Now, uh, here I have on my uh, whiteboard uh, the three different scales, all right, with the chords. And one thing I want you to notice is, first of all, uh, when we go to harmonic and melodic, notice that the C chord can no longer be a stable triad. It's C plus. That's the uh, symbol they use, uh, the, the plus sign. Uh, the circle uh, stands for diminished, by the way. Uh, the C plus is augmented. That means it has a broken fifth. So it will not be stable, all right? Um, that's one problem that arises, and uh, in the case of harmonic minor, we still just have the one diminished chord there at, at the seventh step, the G-sharp diminished, but in the case of melodic minor, yes, we have two stable triads here, but then we have the uh, augmented triad, which is not stable, and this is important because C is supposed to be related to A minor, but when you get C augmented, it's, you can't have a stable uh, C chord there, so you cannot switch normally between the two keys without getting a lot of uh, tension. So again, this is the reason why we blend all these together. In other words, I'm going to just shortly say this. If you're an A harmonic minor and you have to reach a C chord, you borrow it from the natural minor, otherwise it'll sound really obtuse. So um, this is how you blend these all together. Um, Here's the thing I really, oh, well, let's go through, let's continue going through. Uh, so the C plus is, is, um, is unstable. We have an E7, which is stable, an F major, which is stable, and G sharp diminished, which is not stable. Here in the melodic minor, we have uh, stable minor chords. We have the unstable C chord. We have two stable uh, dominant seventh chords. And finally, two unstable diminished seventh chords. Now, Having two dominant seventh chords in one key, this is a radical, radical departure. Now think about it. If I take a G7 chord, right? In the early Greek days, G7 would only resolve to C. So its function is that it tells you what key you're in. Every key has its own unique dominant seventh. So as soon as you see a dominant seventh, you can name the major key it's from. All right. Uh, but with the advent of the major minor key system, now, uh, G7 can not only resolve to C major, but it can resolve to C minor as well. And then if we get involved in the um, melodic minor development, there are two dominant seventh chords in there. So G7 could be the fourth step of uh, the key of D minor. So now G7 has, aside from blues, which is a whole other uh, system, uh, the G7 chord can now resolve to a minor from five steps away, it can resolve, of course, to a major from five steps away, and it could be the fourth step of the melodic minor scale. So you can see where uh, things change, and now the, the dominant seventh chord is no longer the thumbprint of the key, um, which is uh, quite problematic. Uh, but, you know, we're working to resolve these, uh, these uh, problems and, and to work with them, which is what musicians do. Uh, now, this is going to be really confusing. Um, this is, all right, I have to discuss relative and parallel once again. Relative means within the key, parallel means outside of the key. Now, when we build the A minor chord scale, even if it's natural minor, right, A minor is the sixth step of the key of C. So you could say when we go A minor, 
B diminished, C major, D minor, E minor, F diminished, all this stuff, right, at the top, I could say that this is 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? But if we consider A minor as being its own key, then this has to be called 1. That means we have 1, 2 diminished, 3 major, 4 minor, 5 minor, flat 6 major, flat 7 major, or dominant 7. Uh, why flat 6 and flat 7? The way to determine any uh, elements like that is by comparing this scale to an A major scale. A major is A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, all right? Now, A, B, C sharp, oh, we got a, at the third step, we have a flat. This is not C sharp, it's C natural, so it's flatted down, so we call that flat three. This is four minor, five minor, Y flat six, because in the key of A major, F is an F sharp, so it's the six is flatted. In the key of A major, G is a G sharp, so the G is flatted. So now when we do templates in that regard, now we come up with a real clusterfuck of stuff here. Uh, we have one, two, uh, three, wait, what are we doing here? Uh, yeah, one, two diminished, three major, four minor, five minor, uh, this would actually be flat six minor and that'd be flat seven, uh, flat six major and flat seven major. I didn't really think that through when I wrote it. Uh, but you get the idea. I'm not going to go into that because that's really nerdy mathematical stuff and you don't need it terribly. But here's, here is the important point. If I were to get rid of all the chords in these three different environments, um, except for the one, the four, and the five, in A harmonic minor, the 1 would be A minor, the 4 would be D minor, and the 5 would be E minor. And A, that's A natural minor. I'm sorry, did I say harmonic? Uh, for harmonic minor, the 1 is A minor, the 4 is D minor, and the 5 is E7. All right, so A minor, D minor, E minor, A minor, D minor, E7. And now, with melodic minor, a minor, D7, E7. So you can clearly see how the 1, the 4, and the 5 always remain stable throughout these mutations. And of course, the 1, the 4, and the 5 are very important parts of the key. So if you have a chord progression, like for example, uh, Blue Bassa, that's a, uh, a jazz Latin tune, the chords are uh, C minor 7, F minor 7, D minor 7 flat 5, G7. Now let me transpose that to A minor so you get more of the idea. That would be A minor 7, D minor 7, right? Don't worry, the B minor 7 flat 5 comes from this diminished. Don't worry about that too much. Uh, but it's still natural minor so far. But then we have an E7. Now is there a, a B diminished in the harmonic minor scale? You bet there is. So uh, uh, when you see a 1, 4, 5 in minor, but the 5 is dominant 7th, you know it's harmonic minor. When the 5 is minor, in this situation, you know it's natural minor. And when you have a 4 major or a 4 dominant 7th, or an end of 5 major and a 5 dominant, or a 5 dominant 7th, you can tell this is melodic minor. So what does that mean? For this chord progression, you play A natural minor scale, which is equivalent to a C major scale. For this one, you play A harmonic minor scale, and for this one, you play A melodic minor scale. Uh, I don't have my looper set up, but I'll give you an example. There's a song, uh, a jazz tune by the name of Killer Joe. Now, the chords to that song are C7 and B flat 7, where resolves back to the C. Now easily I could play blues against that. Right? But if you want to get a more interesting sound, if we think about it, when we uh, look at the uh, 4 and the 5 of the melodic minor, or D7 and E7. Well, let's think of it more uh, 
generically as two dominant seventh chords a whole step apart, which don't exist in any chord family template except for melodic minor. Okay, now in this case I have C7 and B7. Wait, that's two dominant seventh chords a whole step apart. That me might mean that I'm coming from F melodic minor, because F would be one, B flat would be four, B flat seven would be four, and C7 would be five. Now, if I wanted to get a different non-blues sound, more uh, jazz scale sound for this progression, now I'm using melodic minor against as a through scale against those two chords, and I'm getting a totally different sound. So um, that's what this kind of knowledge of how harmony connects can. Uh, give you more possibilities to expand. And uh, I will tell you this, if you master the seven Greek modes, and if you master the harmonic and melodic minor scale, you will have enough to get through most of the jazz tunes in the real book, the Jazz Bible. Um, I always tell my students, you, you need to master 21 scales. The seven Greek modes, the modes of the uh, harmonic minor, if that's what you want to call them, they're not really modes, but basically starting that scale on each step of it. And finally, the seven modes of the uh, melodic minor, you can tackle just about any jazz song. That's in the future because um, uh, it's in the future. All right, so that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed it, and see you soon.